Dear students, now we are going to discuss semiconductor and its types in detail with its operation. Let's start with the definition of semiconductor. Semiconductors are the materials whose electrical conductivity lies between insulator and conductor. As we know that insulator is a material which cannot conduct and the conductor is a material which is having very high conductivity. So here the electrical properties of the semiconductor is lying between insulator and conductor. That means at very low temperature, example 0 degree Kelvin, the semiconductor material acts as an insulator. It does not conduct at very low temperature, but at the same time, at room temperature or very high temperature, the semiconductor material can act as a conductor. That's why it is called a semiconductor. Do you all understand at low temperature it acts as an insulator, at room temperature or high temperature it acts as a conductor. This is the energy band diagram of the semiconductor. It is having very narrow forbidden energy gap. So the examples for the semiconductor materials are germanium, silicon, gallium arsenide etc. Here this 0.7 electron volt is the cutting voltage or the forbidden energy gap value for this germanium. Similarly, 1.1 electron volt is the value for this silicon. Okay, you have to remember these two values. Next, the properties of semiconductor material. The structure of semiconductor is rigid, directional and crystalline in nature. It is smaller in size and less weight. It is having negative temperature coefficient. That means, when the temperature increases, the resistance value gets decreased. It is represented as temperature is inversely proportional to that resistance value. Here the conductivity is proportional to the concentration of free electrons. Its value is from 10 power 5 to 10 power minus 6 mo per meter. It is having less power loss, low melting and boiling temperatures. Okay. It is widely used in electronic devices rather than insulator and conductor and it is having four valence electrons in its outermost orbits. Okay. Next one is types of semiconductor. Semiconductor is broadly classified into intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor is also called as pure semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor is called as impure semiconductor. This extrinsic semiconductor is further classified into N-type semiconductor, P-type semiconductor. In this N-type semiconductor, we are using pentavalent impurity. For this P-type semiconductor, we can use trivalent impurities. Okay. Let's discuss each type in detail here. Intrinsic semiconductor is a pure form of semiconductor with an ideal crystal structure. Here the number of electrons in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes in valence band. We can say N is equal to NH. That means number of electrons in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band. Okay. Example for this intrinsic semiconductors are germanium silicon. Okay. So let's discuss the structure of this intrinsic semiconductor. Here we can consider silicon atoms. Each atom is having four valence electrons in its outermost orbit. The valence electrons are tightly coupled with the parent atom and also through this covalent bond with the other atoms. Do you all understand? There are no free electrons in this structure. Since there are no free electrons, the semiconductor material cannot conduct. Do you all understand? So, intrinsic semiconductor can act as an insulator at 0 Kelvin. Okay. This is the energy band diagram of this intrinsic semiconductor. So, here valence band, conduction band. Since the number of electrons in the conduction band and the number of holes in the valence band both are equal, the Fermi level is lying at the midpoint of this forbidden energy gap. Fermi level is nothing but the highest energy level that an electron can occupy at zero temperature. Do you all understand? 
As we discussed, at zero degree Kelvin, all the valence electrons are tightly held by the parent atoms and also through covalent bonds by the other atoms. Since there are no free electrons, they cannot conduct electricity. At zero Kelvin, intrinsic semiconductor can act as an insulator. But at room temperature, electron hole pairs are created. How is it possible? Let's discuss here. Okay. At room temperature, few of the electrons in this valence band gains the energy and moving towards this conduction band. So whenever the electron moved to this conduction band, it leaves one positive charge in this valence band that is called as hole. Do you all understand? It is called as electron hole pair. So this occurs at room temperature but it cannot create high conductivity. So if you want to increase the current conduction in this intrinsic semiconductor, we have to apply electric field. So when that electric field is applied across this intrinsic semiconductor, the current conduction takes place because of the movement of these holes as well as electrons. So here in this intrinsic semiconductor, the total current is the sum of the current due to this holes as well as the current due to this electron. Do you all understand this? The major drawback of intrinsic semiconductor is due to poor conductivity at room temperature. It is not used in electron devices. Okay. Next we are going to discuss extrinsic semiconductor that is also called as impure semiconductor. It can be obtained by adding impurities to the pure semiconductor. That's what given in this definition, an intrinsic semiconductor doped with a small and controlled amount of impurities is called as extrinsic semiconductor. Here the doping process is very important. It is defined as the process of adding impurities to pure semiconductor to improve its conductivity. Here impurity represents either pentavalent atom or trivalent atom. Okay. The purpose of doping is to increase the number of free electrons or holes thereby increasing the conductivity of the semiconductor. Do you all understand? So it is very important definition. Okay. So next types of extrinsic semiconductor. There are two types based on that impurity. First one is N-type semiconductor, it can be obtained by adding pentavalent impurities to the pure semiconductor. The next one is P-type semiconductor. So it can be obtained by adding trivalent impurities to the pure semiconductor. Okay. Let's discuss each type in detail here. The first one is N-type semiconductor. A small amount of pentavalent impurities is added to pure semiconductor to get n-type semiconductor. Pentavalent means it has 5 valence electrons in its outermost orbit. Example for this pentavalent impurities are arsenic, antimony, phosphorus. Okay. This is the structure of n-type semiconductor material. When a pentavalent impurity such as arsenic is added to this germanium semiconductor material, what will happen means the germanium has 4 valence electrons, arsenic has 5 valence electrons. So the 4 or 5 valence electrons are coupling with other germanium atoms using covalent bonds. The 5th electron will be available as a free electron. Do you all understand? So the pentavalent impurities donate free electrons for the current conduction in this semiconductor material. Do you all understand? So the more number of free electrons can be produced by adding more number of arsenic atoms or pentavalent impurities into this pure semiconductor. Hence it is called as N type. N represents negative. Okay. So more number of free electrons are available by adding pentavalent impurities. Okay. So this is the N type material here. When that arsenic atom donates electrons it becomes positive. Okay. So if it is going to release one negative charge means there is one positive immobile charge. So that's what given here. When a pentavalent impurity is added to pure semiconductor, 
four of the five valence electrons will occupy the covalent bonds and the fifth electron will be available as free electron for conduction. So this pentavalent impurities donate electrons for current conduction. Hence, this all are called as donor atoms. As a result of doping, the electrons are called majority carriers. Holes are called minority carriers in n-type materials. So here the number of electron is far greater than number of holes. Then the conductivity of this n-type is obtained as sigma is equal to q into n into mu n where this q is the charge, n is the concentration of electron that means the number of electrons in this volume and mu n is the mobility of electron, okay. Due to the large number of electrons in conduction band, the Fermi level shift upwards the bottom of the conduction band. So here more number of electrons available in this conduction band when compared with this valence band. So obviously the highest energy level that an electron can occupy at 0 Kelvin move towards this conduction band that is called Fermi level. Okay, you have to remember this for n type the Fermi level move towards this conduction band and lower than that band. Okay, next one is P type semiconductor. A small amount of trivalent impurity is added to the pure semiconductor to get the P type semiconductor. Trivalent means it is having three electrons in its outermost orbit or three valence electrons. Okay. Example for this trivalent impurities are gallium, boron, indium, aluminium, etc. Okay. So this is the structure of P type semiconductor material. When a trivalent impurity such as boron is added to this germanium semiconductor material. Three valence electrons can form the covalent bond with the other germanium atoms and the fourth one will leave as a hole. Correct? It is an incomplete bond with this germanium then it can create a hole. So by adding more number of boron to this germanium material, more number of free holes available. So this holes will make a current conduction. So when a trivalent impurity is added to pure semiconductor, the three electrons can form a covalent bond with the surrounding germanium atoms. The one bond is incomplete that can create a hole. The addition of trivalent impurity increases a large number of holes thereby increasing the conductivity in p-type. So in this p-type the conductivity is based on the number of holes. Okay. So the majority carriers are holes, minority carriers are electrons. Here the trivalent impurity is called as acceptor because it accepts free electrons in place of holes. Okay. The conductivity of E type semiconductor. As we know that the number of holes is far greater than the number of electrons in this P type material. So the conductivity depends only on the holes. So Q into P into mu P. Here the P is the number of holes per unit volume, Q is the charge, mu p is the mobility of that holes. Due to large number of holes in valence band, the Fermi level shift downwards the top of the valence band here. Okay, so due to the presence of large number of holes than this conduction band, the Fermi level, Fermi level means highest energy level move towards this valence band. Okay. So this is the formula for this Fermi level energy. Okay.